there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about part two of the three-part series on air brakes in the state of New York. We're in the commercial driver's manual, section 5.2 and 5.3, which talks about dual air brake systems, the primary and secondary system. If one system fails, the other system will continue to work normally. The two-way check valve will keep the spring brakes off of the back so you don't come to a screeching halt and do a bug impression on the windshield. And then we're going to talk about pre-trip inspections outside of the vehicle, the components that you test, what you say, secure on the vehicle, not damaged, a rock didn't fly up and hit it, not leaking. 75% of the components on your commercial vehicle have either fluid or air in them. So we're always listening for air leaks because the first part of your pre-trip inspection is to chalk the wheels and release the spring brakes. <coughs> so there is air in the system. So while you're doing your pre-trip inspections around the vehicle, always listening for air leaks. As well, your in-cab checks, your five in-cab checks that you're going to do for the purposes of checking the system to ensure that it's working. The hardest part is the in-cab because it's pure memorization. You have to check the governor, the minimum and maximum setting. You have to check the low air warning to ensure that it's working at 60 pounds or above. Pump down to make sure that the spring brakes activate automatically between 20 and 45 pounds. And in the state of New York, you don't have to go out and check that the spring brakes actually apply. You just have to make sure that the two buttons, the trailer air supply and the parking control valve on the dash pop out between 20 and 45 pounds. Then you're going to do a buildup, which is the compressor test that it builds air between 85 and 100 pounds in 45 seconds. Most modern air brake systems have more than enough air coming out of the air compressor that they're going to do this well within that amount of time. Then you're going to pump to maximum pressure. The air dryer purges, the needle stops climbing at maximum pressure because you've stopped putting air in the system maximum pressure of the governor and then you're going to do a leak test and check the integrity of the system those are the checks then at the end we'll go over the sample test questions that are in the commercial driver's manual and we're going to talk to you about all of that and give you some more detail about that so we'll be right back to talk to you about the commercial driver's manual section 5253 5, section 2 of the air brakes for the New York State CDL exam. Air brakes, dual air brake systems. All braking systems on all modern vehicles are divided into two secondary and primary systems. This is so that if one system fails, the other will continue to work normally. If you open the hood and take the cover off the master cylinder in your car or light truck, You'll see that there's two chambers in there. One is for braking the front axles and the other is for braking the rear axles. Air brake systems are the same. They're divided into a primary and a secondary braking system. If one fails, the other will continue to operate normally. The secondary system operates everything in front of the driver and the primary system operates everything behind the driver. Secondary and primary. There are two needles or two gauges to tell you the service pressure in the system. One needle tells you the air pressure in the secondary system, the other tells you the air pressure in the primary system. As I said, if one system fails, the other will continue to operate normally. What is primarily responsible for dividing the system into a primary and secondary system is the one-way check valves at the entrance to the primary and secondary systems. It stops the air from coming back through if there's a leak in one or the other systems. The other thing is, is that there's a two-way check valve between the two tanks. The two-way check valve will direct air to the spring brakes in the event of a catastrophic air loss from the system that is the highest pressure. Therefore, if one system loses air pressure, the other system, the higher pressure, the two-way check valve between the two tanks will direct air out to the spring brakes and the spring brakes will not come on automatically. Therefore, you will bring, be able to bring the vehicle to a safe stop and get it off the highway and determine what the cause of the air loss is in either one of those two systems. So the dual air brake system allows the system to operate safely. The system will operate normally as long as the air compressor is working and does not fail. Quick overview of pre-trip inspection outside of the vehicle. You have to go outside of the vehicle and inspect the air brake components. For the purposes of an air brake pre-trip inspection, you only need to test the air brake components. You need to test the compressor, bolted securely to the side of the truck. It's not damaged, it's not leaking because it does have oil in it from the lubricating system inside of the motor. Securely fastened if it is belt driven, 1970s. Check the condition of the belt, check the uh, belt for tightness as well. 
lines to the brake chambers, brake chambers secure, not damaged, not leaking. And in New York State, from the manual, you wanna do a pry bar test. It says you can pull it with your hand. You're not gonna be able to pull it with your hand and get a, a determination of whether it's in adjustment or not. So you're gonna need a pry bar. Put the pry bar in the slack adjuster at the clevis pin, pull on it. It shouldn't move approximately more than one inch according to New York rules. If it moves more than an inch, it needs to be in adjustment. Now, slack adjusters. Slack adjusters on air brake equipped vehicles, as the brakes wear, you need to push out farther and farther on the push rod uh, that comes out of the brake chamber to apply the brakes. To adjust for this wear and clearance, you have a slack adjuster, and the slack adjuster takes up the slack in the system. Since 1991 in the United States, all slack adjusters have to be automatic, and you, it's unlikely you're gonna find any vehicle except maybe a training vehicle that has manual slack adjusters on it. They're all gonna be automatic. If it comes out more than an inch, there's only one thing you can do to bring it back into adjustment, and that's to do a six pack. A six pack with a vehicle equipped with automatic slack adjusters, get in the vehicle, pump it up to full pressure, and you know it's a full pressure because the air dryer will purge, and the needles will stop climbing between 100 and 135 pounds per square inch. Once you're at full pressure, make three hard, hard brake applications. So right down over 100 pounds of pressure, release it, Make another one over 100 pounds. Three, at three brake applications, you're gonna to have to pump it back up again and then make three more. Oftentimes, automatic slack adjusters get out of adjustment and there isn't just enough brake pressure to cause the ratchet mechanism inside the slack adjuster to click over to the next one. So you gotta do what's called a six pack and that's basically just pumping the system up to maximum pressure, making six hard brake applications. You can only make three before you have to bring the pressure back up again because most systems just don't have enough air pressure to do that. That's the only thing you can do. So pry bar method, more than an inch. Inspect the components. If there isn't a dust cover inside the wheel and the rim, you wanna inspect the lining, the hub, make sure nothing's cracked, nothing's broken, nothing's hanging off, and nothing is leaking in terms of your pre-trip inspection. So when you go around the vehicle for the purposes of your CDL exam, you have to test the slack adjustment on all the brakes. So if you're doing a tractor trailer unit, tandem, tandem. On an 18-wheeler semi-trailer, you're gonna have 10 brake pots, two on each axle, you have to check the slack adjustment on each brake pot. If you get pulled over by DOT and they do a brake inspection on your vehicle, they're gonna do the applied stroke. So basically what they're gonna do is put a radio on your door in your cab, they're gonna get you to apply the brakes and they're gonna measure push rod travel. On a Type 30, which is the most common on the rear of semi trucks, you're allowed on an automatic slack adjuster a maximum of two inches of travel. So know that if it's kind of odd and the pry bar doesn't quite work or you don't think it's an adjustment, mark the push rod at a fixed space, get a stick and push down on the brake pedal or get somebody else to hold the brakes down and measure from that mark to the face of the brake chamber most often and it should not be greater than two inches on a type 30 brake chamber, which is the most common on the back of semi trucks and trailers. One other point that I need to make the first thing that you need to do to do a pre-trip inspection on your brake chambers and air brake components on the outside of the vehicle is chalk the wheels. You gotta chalk the wheels because you have to release the spring brakes in order to be able to do your pry bar test. So chalk the wheels, more than 100 pounds of air brake pressure in the system, and then release your spring brakes. So push the buttons in on the dash. Then you can go out and measure all your push rod travel with a pry bar. If it's more than an inch, it needs to be adjusted. If it can't be adjusted with a six pack, you need to take it to a mechanic and have them replace the slack adjuster. The other problem with these slack adjusters is oftentimes they don't get enough grease and they just dry up and they won't ratchet over. So sometimes you can put a bit of grease to it, try a six pack, that'll get it to work. If that doesn't work, it needs to be replaced. It's unlikely you're gonna find manual slack adjusters in the United States. They've been around for more than 20 years now. Most of the vehicles in the United States will all be fitted with automatic slack adjusters as well. Vehicles go in for an annual uh, inspection. That annual inspection requires them to have be fitted with automatic slack adjusters. In cab air brake inspections, I'll put a card up here. You can find an infograph of checks that you need to do in the cab. After you finish doing your checks outside of the truck, you have to go in the cab and do the checks in the cab. There are five things that you have to check in the cab, and this will apply to different states. 
Uh, driving examiners and driving schools will be able to help you with this sorts of thing. The difficulty with the inspections in the cab is it's not a touch, feel, see sort of thing. It's all memorization. So essentially the five things that you have to check in the truck, you have to check the governor, the low air warning, the tractor protection system to ensure that the tractor protection system, the trailer air supply valve shuts off air to the trailer, the trailer brakes apply and there's no leaks coming out of the cab via the glad hands. Then you have to get back in the truck, you have to check the compressor, you have to check to make sure that it goes to maximum pressure and then you have to do a leak test. And the leak test checks the integrity of the system that it's able to hold air while you're making a service brake application at maximum pressure. So the five things that you need to check, the governor, the low air warning, tractor protection system, the compressor and the integrity of the system. So those are the five checks that you have to do inside the truck. So essentially what you do is you have it over 100 pounds, pump it down to approximately 100 pounds, throttle up, make sure that the needles are climbing, therefore you know that the governor has put the compressor into the load phase, it's put it into the cut-in phase. Then you pump down to 60 or above, the low air warning comes on, you know that's working. Come all the way down between 20 and 45, the spring brakes on the trailer apply, the trailer air supply button on the dash pops out. The only thing that you know at this point is that the trailer air supply has shut off air to the trailer. You don't actually know if the trailer brakes apply until you actually go out to the trailer and check that they've applied because it's kind of like a light switch. The light switch controls electricity. It turns the electricity off and on and subsequently the light goes off and on. So think of it, think of the trailer air supply in the truck like a light switch in the house that turns the garage light on and off. If we want to know that the light in fact did go off in the garage, we got to go out to the garage and check. So to check that the spring brakes on the trailer actually came on, you got to go out to the trailer and check and make sure that there's an approximately 90 degree angle between the push rod and slack adjuster. That way you know that the spring brakes have applied on the trailer. Come back up, pull the glad hands off, make a service brake application. There aren't any leaks out of the glad hands. Therefore, you know the tractor protection valve is working. The glad hands back on, go back in the truck, fire it up, bring it up to 85 pounds, start your timer. The truck should build between 85 and 100 pounds in less than 45 seconds. Most modern systems will. The air compressors are really good on these systems. Once you get to 100 pounds, push your two buttons on the dash back in to release your parking brakes, bring it up to full pressure. You'll know that the system is at full pressure because the air dryer purges and you check the needles, I hear, I see, I hear the air dryer purge, I see that the needles have stopped climbing between 100 and 135 pounds per square inch. Therefore, I know the system's at maximum pressure and the governor has put it into the cutout phase. Shut the truck off, full service brake application, hold for one minute, you shouldn't lose more than four pounds in a one minute brake application. As well, you can roll down the window and listen for leaks. Leak test on a large commercial vehicle, the most common failure of a leak test is a ripped diaphragm in the service brake chamber. So that's what it's gonna tell you for the inside cab checks for the air brake system. The last test for your air brake pre-trip inspection that you're going to do is testing of the service brakes and the parking brakes on the vehicle. So if you're driving a tractor trailer combination, you're going to test the parking brakes on the truck, the parking brakes on the trailer, service brakes on the trailer using the hand valve and the service brakes on the truck and trailer. Now, apply the parking brakes on the trailer, try and gently pull forward, the vehicle doesn't move, the parking brakes on the trailer work. Same with the truck. Service brakes is a response test. You need to roll ahead a couple of feet and make sure that the brakes apply and release. So when you push down on the brake pedal, the vehicle comes to a stop and the vehicle is released. You roll ahead a couple more feet, pull down the hand valve, service brakes on the trailer release and apply. So the service brakes is a response test. The parking brakes is to ensure that they're holding the vehicle in the locked position. Chapter five, section two, section three, the sample questions that they have in the manual. What is a dual air brake system? It's a system that's divided into a secondary and primary system. In the event that one system fails, the other will continue to work normally. As well, there's a two-way check valve between the primary and secondary tank. If there's a rupture or an air loss in one system, that two-way check valve will direct air from the higher pressure to keep the spring brakes off and you will be able to use the service brakes and bring the vehicle to a safe stop. The dual system, the primary and secondary systems in the air brake system prevent a total air loss and allow you to bring the vehicle to a safe stop. 
What is a slack adjuster? A slack adjuster adjusts slack in the system due to the brake shoes wearing over time and allows you to keep the brakes in adjustment. Since 1991, all of the uh, slack adjusters on large commercial vehicles equipped with air brakes are automatic. It is unlikely that you're gonna come into contact with a vehicle equipped with air brakes that has manual slack adjusters as well. All of these vehicles are subject to uh, annual and semi-annual inspections. These inspections, as soon as they see manual slack adjusters on these vehicles, they have to be taken off so that it meets or it will pass its motor vehicle inspection. How can you check slack adjustment on an air brake equipped vehicle? Use the pry bar method and put it in and pull out on the slack adjuster that comes out of the brake chamber. It should not extend out of the brake chamber more than one inch with a pry bar. The other way that you can do it is called the applied stroke method. You mark the brake chambers, all of the brake chambers on your vehicle at a fixed point and then you either use a stick or get somebody else to apply the brakes. Obviously the vehicle needs to have the chocks in because safety, you don't want it to roll over you. Tough to finish a road test if the truck is laying on your chest, so make sure that you chalk the wheels before you release the parking brakes. Apply the brakes and then measure from your fixed object, usually the face of the brake chamber, out to your mark. The slack adjuster cannot extend out of the brake chamber more than two inches, that's a type 30. Now. The way that they determine push rod travel is the size of the brake chamber, different brake chambers. So type 30 means that it's 30 square inches in the diaphragm. If it's a type 20, it's 20 square inches on the diaphragm. What the DOT and other officials will do is they'll take their little calipers out, they'll measure the diameter of the brake chamber and they'll look it up on their chart. They'll see what type of brake chamber it is and what maximum allowable push rod travel is. I'll put a link up here to the chart for you you're not gonna need the chart. What you need to know for the purposes of the test is on an automatic slack adjuster on a type 30 brake chamber, you're allowed a maximum of two inches of travel on an applied stroke method. How can you test the low air warnings uh, device on your air brake equipped vehicle? Just fan the brakes down to above 60, the low air warning will come on. It's both visual and audible. On an older truck, you might see a wigwag. Not likely though. Visual and audible air, low air warning. On, in an air brake equipped vehicle. How can you test that the spring brakes come on automatically? Simply chalk the wheels, release the spring brakes, pump the system down between 20 and 45, the trailer air supply and the spring parking brake on the dash in the unit will come on automatically between 20 and 45. Once the trailer air supply shuts air off to the trailer, go out to the spring brakes and make sure that the push rod and slack adjuster form an approximately 90 degree angle. That way you know that the spring brakes have applied on your unit. What are the maximum leakage rates? Three, four, six. Three pounds on a single unit, semi-trailer, truck, or bus. Four pounds on a combination unit, truck and trailer and six pounds on a truck with two trailers. But in the United States, they don't allow you to have two trailers in the United States. We do in Canada. Here in British Columbia, they love their Super Bs. So three, four, six. Three pounds for a single unit, bus, truck, semi-trailer, four pounds for tractor trailer unit. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. If you like what you see here, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section. All of that helps us out. If you're having any trouble with your air brakes or something you don't understand or need further clarification, by all means, leave us a comment down in the comment section. Send us a email, info at smartdrivetest.com and more than happy to give you some more information about air brakes to get you through that exam and get you successful in earning your CDL. If, as well, there's a full air brake course over at my website. Click the link here. Head over there, all of the lessons, 10 modules, multiple choice questions, all of the questions have feedback. There's also cheat sheets, list of valves, all kinds of uh, checklist information that you need for the in-cab checks on the air brakes, outside inspections, what you need to do for the practical pre-trip inspection, how to test slack adjustment, whether it's a pry bar method or whether it's a applied stroke method. All of this information is available in the course and all of that for less than $100. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. We're trying to get the cord unhooked.
Yes, we don't make enough money yet for a wireless microphone, but we're working on that, you know, trying to get things going here and taking off so it all works out. Yes. So essentially I'm nattering on here to try and test the microphone and make sure it works before we get going in the big introduction. So does it work? We'll test and see if it works. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 